What is up, guys? It's the PlayStation Pichu bringing you episode 6 of Let's Play Spyro 2 Ripto's Reignited Rage. In the last episode, we learned how to go underwater and went into Idle Springs. And in this episode, things are about to take a dark turn, if you know what I mean. Because we are entering Huracos. Poor guy. Alright. Let's collect some treasure here and what they do you have to say? have always had trouble with the gear grinders, but now they've set up oh, force I, fields okay. to separate oh, us. Hi, uh, if you find diodes, you can use them today. to turn off the force fields. Alright. I think there's a diode around here somewhere, uh, but my so, eyesight isn't um, what it used to be. Yeah, um... I was about to talk about the it's a little the outro the oh an intro you mentioned mentioned and how they were changed like before you, just but with your head, one thing I do want to mention is that in the original game these uh, weird mouse electric guys in Hurricos they sound I think they're electrites or something like that Elec electrols electrols that's what they are electrols oh well. Anyway, these electrols sounded so much more like Spongebob in the original That's game. That's because Tom Kenny was, was doing several voice works, not just Spyro. I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom Kenny told us how to do the, 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 the laugh, of course, you too. Yeah, um, yeah, he goes ah uh, while touching his throat. Yeah, so, um, it, but in this version, it sounds less, the Electro sounds less like Spongebob, even though they're supposedly still voiced by Tom Kenny. And, I, I know some of you might have a problem with Spongebob considering his newer seasons, but I really like how the Electro kind of sounded like him, and I'm a little disappointed that they don't sound like him now but it's whatever I'm I'm over it in fact I've been over it for a while now <laughs> uh, as a kid I thought this was weird that they sounded like Spongebob because I didn't know about voice actors and stuff like that and so I was what weirded out by the fact that it sounded like Spongebob voice yeah but it kind of gave that Spyro that little cheesy vibe that we all love. It's so much like Sonic. In fact, I kind of want a, a Sonic and Spyro crossover game. How awesome would that be? That would actually be interesting. Two similar minds actually duking it out. That would actually be pretty fun. Duking out or working together, or maybe even both. <laughs> Them spouting cheesy lines at each other. Oh, uh, I hope Toys for Bob and Activision and then Sega and Sonic Team work to uh, do that eventually. Because uh, in terms of comedy, bouncing off of each other, Sonic and Spyro are so amazing. And plus, they have different abilities that allow them to stand out, thus making interesting gameplay styles. Gotta go fast. All fired up. Imagine if Sonic and, and Spyro had an ability where if they combined their best abilities, Sonic could like, like leave behind a flaming slipstream while running or something. I think Sonic already does that. Ah, I'm Maybe it's the boost? I, I don't know. 
But anyway, here we're at a part where a lot of people have kind of have been scared of. Scared of. If you can replace them all and activate you see, our generator, I'd be very This grateful. electro this electro is saying that these purple gear grinder thieves keep taking these little, little orbs called lightning stones. And whenever you appear uh, uh sorry. Whenever whenever a lightning stone is attached to these generators, a a gear grinder thief will appear on the map. Your job is to take them out when they appear. And don't worry, as far as I know, you have an unlimited amount of time to catch them. As far as I know, they'll just run around the field and never go away. And this, and they won't even and take the lightning stones with them. They'll just carry them around, maybe drop them somewhere, and all you have to do is just either charge at them or flame them, and they're gone. Which I'm kind of surprised that you can charge them because they're so big. I mean, back in Colossus, the yaks were completely unchargeable. But these guys are bigger th than those yaks, yeah, you can charge them. That's kind of weird if you think about it. But I'm not about to complain anytime soon. So, I actually liked this mission in the original trilogy. These guys were funny as heck for me. Yeah. Except these big guys with the tiny legs and the huge flipper arms just going. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Although some people yeah. kind of got scared by that, and I can kind of see why. I mean, they do look kind of menacing, but. <laughs> I was more alarmed by the alarm. Oh, uh, pun, sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> I completely forgot to mention this. Sometimes, when a gear grinder thief appears and takes a lightning stone, an alarm will go off. And if you go near the area where the alarm is sounded, then you'll find the you'll find the thief. There's so. actually a difference with this mission and the original trilogy. Unfortunately, this mission got easier. You see, back in the original game, the alarm was more alarming, more danger alerting, you know? More loud, even. Just this big alarm, you know? Big scary alarm. And the, the, the gear grind, then the uh, thieves would actually appear in larger numbers and take out many more of your orbs. But you would only spawn more of these guys by putting in less orbs. Now, in the remake, they kind of reverse that. You get less gear grinders at a time, but it takes more orbs to make them appear. In fact, you pretty much have to just put in all the orbs to make another one appear. That's the thing. Really? I did. Yeah. Throughout this mission, I never get anywhere close to getting all the stones in, and they still appear. I mean, they also, do appear one by one, but they still appeared for me in spite of not uh, getting all the stones in. I kind of remember this being harder than in the original game because, like I said, I only played up to Autumn Plains in the original, but it's long ago, so I don't really remember. But anyway, after you defeat all the thieves, all you have to do is put all the lightning stones in their place, and the generator will, will power up, and another orb will be yours. Also, are you thinking what the orbs would also power up the generator, considering that they're pretty powerful magical items, but whatever. Okay. I mean, they- Also, fun fact about the original trilogy. In the third game, not only did they have the special anti-piracy method, but they also had another trick up their sleeves. They did. They wanted to try to make this a little bit harder, considering it was the third game in the franchise, of course. So they had this little thing in the background, Thank you, where we detect whether you're good or you're bad, mixed basically. Up with our so basically, stones. if you sucked at the Please game, it would make it the game as a reward. easier. But if you were getting too good, it would try to increase the difficulty and make you die more. Unfortunately, that only lasts so long. Because fans got good pretty good pretty, pretty shortly after, basically. 
even I have a tough time trying to make the game more difficult. I have not tried this yet, but there's also cheat codes to make the game easier and cheat codes to make the game harder. I'm probably gonna see if those cheat cards those G codes actually make the game a lot more harder than the game actually can make it. Because it can only go so far before you're just too good for the game. So it's basically like if you're playing the original Spyro Journey and you die way too like a hundred times or something, the game goes easy on you. But if you're just able to plow through everything, the game makes it harder. Yes, it's like an adaptive difficulty or something like that. Adaptive AI difficulty. That is so revolutionary! We should patent that! Unfortunately, it didn't get used much. Oh, Not well. to mention, it can only go so far back then. It was only able to go so far back then on difficulties. Well, I'm sure it can go better. Better now that we're in more modern age. And also, because I destroyed all the robots made by those yellow creatures, which I swear is a reference to Ratchet and Clank, you get a trophy called Exterminate! 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 That's not, a re that's not Ratchet and Clank, that's Doctor Who. I know, but the, the robots and cre yellow gear grinders kind of look like Ratchet and Clank, but... Oh yeah, yeah. that's actually kind of the reference, even in the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. People pointed that out, that they looked like another Insomniac property. And I don't think Ratchet and Clank was even around when Spyro 2 was new, were they? I'm not sure, actually. I never looked at you, Ratchet and Clank. The only thing I know, uh, the only thing I have of Ratchet and Clank is something that my friend gave me for the PS3. Ah. Well, either way... Yeah, I never really was... Stay. I never really was into Ratchet and Clank, but he gave me this game just to try it out. I have yet to try it out, though. Especially since it's on the PS3, I haven't touched the PS3 in so long. Ah. Uh, so, um... So, if Ratchet and Clank didn't exist but when Spyro 2 was new, then Spyro 2 kind of foreshadowed that franchise, so... If it weren't for Spyro... Well, Zombiac. Well... Well... You know what I mean. But, yeah, in case you weren't getting my reference, the way I was saying, exterminate, is, well, if you've seen Doctor Who, you'll probably know what I'm referencing. It's a certain robot that is essentially a maniacal AI that is bent on destroying the world. Maybe. It's not an AI, actually. Wait, what? But they're no, self-aware, they right? Further into it. They're actually an alien species that mutated eventually, but lost all emotions except anything that relates to anger, rage, and hate, and stuff like that. And thinks that anything that is not their species should just be dead, basically. And so they go on a rapid, ex like, a galactic extermination while wearing a mobile all armor, basically. A mobile armor source. So, the Daleks are aliens trapped in a metallic body. Basically, and you don't want to see what they actually look like inside of there. Good lord, that this. Uh... That sounds morbid enough, even not looking at what's inside. I mean, imagine if, like, you got. you were, like, killed and were. stuffed into. You see that a, building over there? a mechanical like suit and were deprived of all emotion except negativity. That's like. A, a nightmare. And no, I'm not Basically, talking- Basically, the Khalids- Yeah, I know, the, the origin story is a little bit uncreative with the original alien species name. But the Khalids eventually mutate because apparently that's what their species does or something like that. And they eat it away in order to kind of make it so that they, they are capable still, you know? But they kind of eventually became a war-hungry species. And so, eventually, those mutated forms were put into these mobile armor- tank things and became Daleks. Wait, that's... it... that happens naturally to them? Apparently. Oh, and by the way, the mobile armor tank thing was created by a man named Davros. Hmm... 
I think Spyro, I now know where the so name fun. Dalek you comes from. Trinket for good luck. If you have any questions yeah. about shutting uh, down the factory, then just I don't want to spoil the origins episode from like the old days. But let's just say Davros doesn't show up much in the show. The next glides get tricky. You'll have to All use right. your hover maneuver to make them. So press the action. We're now in the mission where hover, we're gliding on fans, high. and here's what I find Remember funny. To press the action uh, when you're after very this close to the electro you won't make stops it. talking about it, it says it's a five star difficulty. And like but like when I first played this, I did make a mistake towards the end of this, but I actually got really close to the, um, close to the end, to the point where I literally said, Ha! You call this five stars? <laughs> Not to offend anyone who got, who had a hard time with this, but... Eh, I wouldn't say I had a hard time, I just would say I may have... Uh, messed up the first few times of course it's a bit tricky it's it's jumping across moving platforms it's not exactly going to be easy for everyone yeah and during this time you may have noticed that i was destroying mercilessly destroying a bunch of windmills that's uh, a little morbid but anyway destroying all the windmills actually gives you this actually gives you a skill point <laughs> Yeah, some skill points are pretty easy and quite obvious. Because sometimes people can't help it but mercilessly destroy random objects that can be destroyed. Yeah, I've seen that a lot during Overwatch pre-game action. Pre-game. Trust me, whenever, whenever I play, when I play first play the game in like like back when I was a kid, I I just Spiral. couldn't help but try to see what I could destroy. You know, what could be done even with this game, even like you know. Back when, like, not everything was possible, so you must see what they have done so far in the game. See what they did, you know? Find all the secrets. Find out what can be destroyed and interacted with, you know? Kind of thing. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. So. And... Leave it up to my imagination sometimes to find out things, and yeah, I just discovered this just by pure natural playthrough. Ooh, it looks wooden. It looks like a scenery object, but it doesn't feel like it's part of the scenery. Maybe it's destroyable. It is. Yeah. Like, I find childish mind, uh, the mindsets of children to be crazy. Not in a bad way, but, you know. So, what's this yeah, electro doing here? We still try to test here? things in games sometimes, like say... Spyro, help! Does fire the work in this game? Gear grinder so you factory literally just jump room, into the but, fire. Um, it's awfully noisy. So games, this generator is noisy. It and some games it doesn't. Wait, this generator is supposed to be really noisy. Yet it's yet I didn't even need to cover my ears when I was in this room. Is that Electro a coward? The <laughs> no, they just don't have the boy in that loud. Gears. You can have it if you want. They deliberately lowered the volume to avoid ruptured eardrums. More the fact that there's kids playing and kids have uh, developing ears. Alright. That makes sense. And so... Remember, this game was enjoyed by everyone. All the way to the senior citizen age. So even then, for senior citizens, they needed that not to be so loud. Mm -hmm. But that ends our stuff in Kurokos. So, Electro, your name's Brainy. Uh, I, I guess you have a big brain. Please so, shall I make a reference? To what? <laughs> oh my god. Gee, play, what do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Time to Ooh. take over the world. The Pinky on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually heard about that show from Cartoon Conspiracies. It sounds pretty hilarious. I would have sung you the whole song if we had time, of course. Yeah, but we don't really have time. I'm just exiting the world. So, um, in That's the next fair. episode, we will be going to the less dark... <laughs> I said dark. ...world in the summer forest, the sunny beach. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, Share this video, and if you could, I could borrow a favor from you.
I'd be greatly appreciated. This is the PlayStation Pichu and Patapon Creeper, and we hope you enjoyed.